Hello everyone, uh, I'm Diana Paul and um, I'd like to welcome you to this Photo London presentation entitled Lena Amowit and Zoe Meyer, Artifacts and Models. This is ahead of uh, the artist's solo presentation at Photo London in May with Robert Moore at Gallery. Uh, I'm delighted to be sitting in the studio with the artists in Zurich this evening. Um, We've set ourselves up uh, so you'll be able to see uh, their different spaces. I'm actually in more of a exhibition room and you can hopefully see behind me the row of um, mathematical uh, models um, just hanging behind me. And the artists uh, are sitting just next door in their studio workspace. I'll be giving a short introduction uh, to the artists and then handing over to them where they'll take you through their practice in more detail. Uh, we'll be talking, uh, presenting for about 30 minutes and then I'll follow up with a few questions. Um, do drop any questions in uh, the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen um, and we'll be able to come back to these at the end of the, at the, end of the talk. I met uh, Lena Amwert and Zoe Meyer last year in Zurich. Uh, we were introduced by our mutual friend Roger Bahad, uh, who told me I absolutely have to see their work. He was definitely right. I'm an art advisor specializing in photography, and I also work on exhibition and curatorial projects. And most recently, I worked with Lena and Zoe on the curation of their exhibition, Paint Me a Future, at the IC's Gallery in Arles uh, during the opening week of Les Rencontres d'Arles Photo Festival. When I met the artist here in the studio the first time, uh, I was really struck by the kaleidoscope of colors, different sized uh, photographs with their array of mysterious forms carefully placed along the walls. Uh, also noticing uh, colored painted frames with matching uh, colors within the images uh, in soft pinks, magentas and blues. Uh, some of the frameworks are stacked one behind the other, revealing a small part of an object behind sparked my curiosity further. I noticed exotic objects on shelves next to rows of books. Uh, there were test prints with an antique statue in one and a lucky strike cigarette packet in another. Uh, these playful juxtapositions against more serious statements took me back and forwards in time within seconds. Um, and amongst and um, amongst all this, uh, all these impressions, uh, everything still felt in harmony. So once I hand over to the artist, um, hopefully you'll be able to see some of these impressions um, behind them in the studio space, and they'll also be showing you some images of their of their studio and their presentation. Um, I'm going to bring up a few slides now. Uh, their images are so visually strong. I wanted you to be able to enjoy these as I take you through the rest of my introduction. So I'll just share that now. So it's definitely an exciting moment for the artist. After their exhibition, Paint Me a Future in Arles in July, they had a solo presentation at Unseen Amsterdam with Robert Moore at Gallery. Uh, they, uh, they've just opened an exhibition with fellow Swiss artist Simone Holliger uh, entitled Seisme at La Ha in Paris. And they're currently preparing for their upcoming solo exhibition at Robert Moore at Gallery in Berlin in January. Earlier solo exhibitions of note include Helmhaus in Zurich and uh, Photon Forum Pascal Biel in Switzerland. And the artists will uh, certainly show you some exhibition images uh, from these various presentations uh, in a few minutes. Uh, they've also published six books to date, all with About Books in Zurich, founded by uh, Bruno Margaret. Their most recent Artifacts and Models was published last year. And if you're at Photo London in May, uh, please do go to Robert Morat's booth and have a look at their, their publications. They really are exquisite, um, so beautifully designed and conceived. Lena and Zoe have been working together since 2008 between Berlin and Zurich. 
Uh, their ongoing photographic series, Artifacts and Models, is uh, now over 12 years in the making, containing over hundreds, uh, hundreds of images. Uh, working in a consistent and focused way, they seek out and document artifacts, mathematical models, and teaching objects um, in rare archives and university collections across Europe. Most of the objects are tucked away, uh, gathering dust in basements, and akin to archaeologists, they dive into past, era, uh, past eras drawn in by these en enigmatic objects that were originally created to convey abstract concepts. Uh, the artists are fascinated by how form and aesthetic has the power to communicate knowledge. The, the artists photograph the models devoid of context, so they remove all references to their origins and function. We're left knowing almost nothing about, um, nothing factual about each of the photographed items. So instead, the models are left to communicate uh, through the power of their visual identity alone. And when speaking with the artists, I often uh, get a sense of their thrill at giving a new life to some of these objects that have somehow been left behind. They embrace analog and, hand, and the handmade. This is really at the core of their practice. Uh, this is, goes from the meticulous, their meticulous darkroom printing to the colorful backdrops they use, which have been collected over many years. Um, slow, precise, yet intuitive, and multi-layered, uh, it feels like a rigorous, even ritualistic approach to working. And this really imbues each of their objects with its own aura. And contained in a technicolor isolation, they almost feel like portraits were drawn in by their individual characters and charisma. When I was invited to recommend artists for the IC's gallery exhibition in Arles, uh, Lane and Zoe's work felt like the right choice. Uh, in Arles, we're surrounded by layers of history, um, and particularly during Les Rencontres d'Arles, the photo festival, we discover new artistic interventions alongside antique structures, which is so inspiring. I was really intrigued by how Lane and Zoe's work would sit uh, in this context. There were definitely certain of their works that, res uh, that resonated. Um, this one on the left, On Disappearing, um, shows a one of their mathematical objects, which is certainly reminiscent of some of the antiquities that we might come across in Arles. And it's standing in this yellow grid room. We notice the background progressively obscuring the object in the foreground until in the last photograph, we only see a shadow um, reminding us of its presence. Not only did this work have a lot of presence in the exhibition, set against the artist's beloved and carefully selected Yves Klein blue uh, wall, it also um, felt like a playful nod to the surroundings. I'd like to leave you with a quote uh, from art historian and uh, the writer Gare Burton, whose text, uh, who wrote the text in uh, the artist publication, Artifacts and Model uh, Models. I think it beautifully sums up uh, their work and it's a nice place uh, for me to hand over to the artists. Throughout the work's individual auras, the mystery and majesty, majesty imbued in each of Amuet and Maya's salvage objects is accompanied by playfulness. In their colors and patterns, the mashup of antiquity and consumerism, the anomalies of title and technique, the variously impossible or lost forms, and above all, and the sheer gorgeousness with which these dug out and dusted down teaching models have been represented the artworks play among the ruins of vanishing eras. And now I'm delighted to, to hand over to Lena Amowet and Zoe Meyer. <laughs> Many thanks to Diana for the friendly introduction and good evening, everybody. We are very happy to present our artwork online tonight and would like to thank the whole Photo London team and also especially a big thank you to Robert from Robert Moritz Gallery in Berlin for this great opportunity. 
We asked Diana for this introduction because we developed a close working relation over this year and did some exciting projects together, such as studio views with collectors, the project in us, etc. And as Diana already mentioned, we are Lena Amia and I'm Zoe Meyer, speaking from our studio here in Zurich, Switzerland. This studio is our common working space, an important place for focus, contemplation and production in our artistic practice. Tonight, we would like to tell you more about our common artwork and give you an insight into our body of work. So now we would like to share our screen with you. And here we go. Okay. And full screen. Okay. Yes. So now we would like to share our screen with you and do a presentation which is structured as follows. First, we will show you pictures of some of our artworks from our series entitled Artifacts and Models, as well as some exhibition views. Later, we will talk about our working process and how we collaborate as an artistic duo. Our work entitled Artifacts and Models, from 2009 until today, is devised as a long-term project at the intersection of science and visual arts, on which we have been working on since 13 years now. It consists of several series of works which are constantly expanding. As part of this work, we have been photographing a large number of objects from various scientific collections in universities and museums all over Europe. We are interested in these physical objects, which embody scientific concepts and ideas of certain eras. We would like to start our presentation with, with a framed artwork from our series of mathematical models. The mathematical models are a central series of our work which we are, have been working on since 2009 until today. The mathematical models do fascinate us because they were made to visualize abstract formulas or models of thought that lay beyond material references. They are abstract concepts of thought made into visual, so they show something abstract, what is actually not really representable. The aesthetics of these models is characterized by their material and the traces of handicraft production. Their appeal oscillates between the aesthetic appearance and their scientific meaning and how they address questions concerning the visualization of knowledge. We find these material mathematical models often decades past their actual use as they have been replaced by computer generated models and will disappear in the near future. Mm -hmm. Okay, these were the mathematical models. Now we would like to show you some more images from our series artifacts and models from 2009 till today. Apart from investigating concepts of modeling in science, we also do photograph artifacts and models whose meaning and impact is rooted in ritual, cultic, fetishistic, or religious contexts. In the style of modern Wunderkammer and cyclopic delical collections, we devise a subjective worldview in which elements from science, religion, and nature are recombined. We focus on various strategies of collecting and attempt to reformulate scientific conceptions from an artistic point of view. We regard our work in this context as the highly subjective, ever-expanding image archive. And here you see um, an image of our series, The Wings. It's an early series from 2011. Um, the Wings are taxidermists from scientific collections in Germany and Switzerland and were collected for university studies. We were fascinated by their beauty, but also by the brutality of these natural seabird objects.
And this is our series from confiscated objects. They show exotic objects that were confiscated at the Swiss border for species protection reasons. Deprived to their original cultic and social meaning, the artifacts became illegal culture goods, which are collected in high security basements of the Swiss government. We decided to present this series in black and white. This is a Metroid model, a model of Metroid from a natural science collection. The Metroid models are made, also these models are made of paper and therefore very light and contrast with the dense Metroid rocks of cosmic origin. And now some images of our series, the biological models from 2011 and 12. Mushrooms. <clears throat> this is a pupillen model. It's a didactic tool used in biology classes to show students the adaptation of the pupil to light reflections. And this, this movement of the pupil is comparable to the aperture of a photo camera. So now we show you some Montessori models from 2011 and 14. What you can see here are different images of didactic models made for kindergarten use, so-called sensory material invented by Maria Montessori. Through the aesthetic and sensual appearance of the models, the child is encouraged to learn independently. That leads to questions like, how do we learn and understand things? Which models and objects influence our perception of the world? And how does, for example, this pink tower of the Montessori shape our idea of mathematics? This is a theme which is of great interest to us. Portrait of an unbekannt Frau, portrait of an unknown woman. We discovered this statue in a collection of the city of Vienna, Austria. Nobody knows where she came from. Now we would like to show you some several images of statues from 2011 till 2022, so recent. The photographed sculptures are plaster casts of ancient sculptures. They are not the original statues, but plaster copies, which can be reproduced in large numbers. We are interested in the questions of original and copy, which is, of course, also a big theme in photography. And here we did some uh, image noise, some uh, small digital manipulations as well, or double exposures. We did some testing, right? There's some digital manipulations. Um, here, for example, it's called Cupid and Psyche, Amor und Psyche, 2017. The image shows a sculpture from classicism. We did a picture invention, a black rectangle, reminiscent of a sensor bar and obscures something in the picture. And these are utopic models, some objects found in a private collection in Italy of utopic models, which were never realized. The red color, 2018, the red color is a reference to painting, color symbolism and effects, and monochromes are also recurring themes in our work. And this work is entitled Lucky Strike. It's a model of a Doric column stand next to a pack of Lucky Strike cigarettes. The cigarette pack serves here also as a size comparison. Here as well, a digital manipulation, the Ausgrabung DHL 2022, so very recent artwork. We showed uh, only, as a, only now in Paris. The artwork is a loose reference to contemporary archeology span Two historical periods overlap, ancient world and present day. Next to antique objects, we see a ripped fragment of a tape from DHL.
The Coca-Cola can is standing between ancient stones from the crypt of Zurich in the image Coca-Cola 2019. This is our most recent artwork from this autumn. The monochrome image refers to an absence, an object which has dissolved and which itself is missing, and only the shadow reminds of, of its former presence. Um, this is a series entitled The Lost Collection, Die Verlorene Sammlung. The images of the series Lost Collection refer to archival documents of collected objects that are considered lost. In our artwork, our research has often taken us to very different collections and archives. Sometimes it happened that the collection is considered lost. Some of these missing objects from these collections now only exist as photographs, in documents or books. Of one of these collections, to be precise, a collection of handicrafted ceramics objects, we decided to cut out the photographs of these destroyed objects and put these cutouts on black backgrounds, leaving us only with the graphic representation of the visual gap, the shadow of the former objects, a reminder of the loss. Okay, so these were some insight about our artworks and images. Now we would like to share some exhibition views with you. Um, we're going to start with our recent exhibition at La Ha, Rue Grise and Rue Moret. They have two um, rooms. We had a solo show with Simon Holliger in Paris this, this autumn. Uh, we just we opened it just two weeks ago, and the exhibition will run until December. And if you're planning to travel to Paris during Paris Photo, we will be very happy to welcome you in this exhibition. This is Anz in Amsterdam with Robert Moret Gallery 2022. In September 2022, we had the great opportunity to show our work at the Unseen Fair in Amsterdam in a solo booth of Gallery Robert Morat. We are very happy to be represented by Gallery Robert Morat from Berlin since this September and are looking very much forward to ex exciting future projects with the gallery. So this was all the ICs also from this year. That's the exhibition that Diana introduced already. So here's uh, an exhibition in the crypt from 2019 before the Corona time. In 2019, we were invited to do a solo exhibition in the crypt of the Grossmünster in Zurich. Once a year, a Swiss artist is invited to realize a solo exhibition in the crypt. And this was a site-specific installation. We installed painted walls, photographs, and sculptures. La Ha, Rue Grise et Rue Moret solo show 2018. This was our first solo show at La Ha in Paris. And we, we did show for the first time a larger series of 20 mathematical models in Rue Grise. In Rue Moret, we did some interventions with painted walls, sculptures and images in the theme of archaeology. Okay. Sorry, we were a bit quick. Okay, this was the Helm House. Uh, in 2011, it's the work and studio grants of the city of Zurich. Um, the way of installing the artworks like this has something provisional and changeable. We often do not show our pictures as thematic th series, but we mix different picture motifs. In the form of a modern cabinet of curiosity, we construct a subjective worldview in our work into which aspects of science, nature and art are united. Helmhaus number two, 2015. Yeah. In this installation, we played with several media like photography, printing images of fabrics, sculptures, and for the first time, a 3D rendering movie. 
With this presentation, we won a studio grant to spend six months in New York. Yeah. Aliquid Mirari, Piano Nobile, 2014. In this group show in Geneva, we showed a mathematical model, a 3D relief perspective, which we presented as an oversized mural pasted directly on the existing wall. The more exhibition views here, the European Month of Photography in Berlin, 2018, a group show, or here, Les Shows at Gallery Mark Müller in Zurich, 2015. Yes, so now we would like to say something about our publications and books, because this is an important part of our artwork. Besides to our exhibition activities, the book is a central medium of our artistic work. In the recent years, eight artist books have been published in collaboration with the publishing house about books founded by Bruno Margaret in 2017. Last year, our book, Artifacts and Models, was published. It's a collection of works that shows over 200 framed images. There is always only one picture per double page spread. In the book, we have deliberately not arranged the picture thematically or chronologically. And the book is completed by a text section and includes three text contributions by Gare Burton, Ton Walchley and Thomas Gonmo. Here you can see our first public, our, one of our first publications. Mm -hmm. It's the mathematical models from 2009 till 15. This book is sold out. And so we decided to make a second volume in 2018 with the mathematical models, the ongoing series, new images that follow. Here is the publication we made uh, for the crypt exhibition, it was postcards that you could tear off and send all over the world. This is the book we did for the lost collection. It's a Leporello. Here, the confiscated goods, a small magazine, which is also out of print now. And this is the most recent work we did, an art edition with Simon Holliger, limited to 50 copies. We just had the book Vernissage two weeks ago. It's um, four hardcover plates um, that you could also frame and hang directly mm -hmm. or collect it as a book. <clears throat> Um, now we would like to talk about our working process. About us, we met 23 years ago at a well-known photography class in Zurich at the ZTK, where we both studied photography until 2003. After some works, uh, after some years working individually, we started collaborating as an artist duo in 2008. In 2000. 11, after spending three months of artistic research in Berlin, we moved with both our families to the city, which offered affordable spaces and good working conditions, and continued our collaboration in Berlin. Simultaneously, we completed our Master in Fine Arts at the Zurich University of the Arts. Uh, yeah, we spent a very good time in Berlin, but in 2016, we moved back and set up our studio in Zurich here again, which we uh, are about to pack up and move to a new location in the city by end of this year. So now about a bit more about our working process, um, to take a glance behind the curtains, kind of. <laughs> Um, our working process includes a phase of extensive research. We collect images and text material and collaborate with different scientific archives and collections. We do also a lot of online research in different databases, mostly of universities. Yes, and we travel with a mobile photo studio 
and photograph the models on location in the collection using stellar analog photographic technology. We stage and appropriate the models by removing the objects from the current context of the collection and photographing them in front of colorful back paper backgrounds, which we collected over the last years. The photographed models gain a new space and become part of our personal artistic collection context. So here you see us traveling. About analog photography, during our studies in photography at Zurich University of Arts, we learned the traditional craft of photography, both conceptually and technically. We believe we still benefit from this today, and it is one of the reasons why we still use analog technology. We are always working with a small format Nikon camera, shooting on 35 millimeter color negative film, and do rely on traditional photographic printing techniques. Our finished artworks mostly exist in the form of analog C prints, which are all locally hand printed. Until a few years ago, we used to operate our own color lab together with other photographers, where we did also all our color printing ourselves. Here you can see our lab and us working in the lab with the negatives and the printing. Here. For some works, we use scans of analog working prints, read those images di digitally, and then produce the final prints on our high resolution pigment inkjet printer that mostly represent analog C prints. Editing and image selection are also important steps in our work. Here you can see some testings for the book also, or some hanging. Um, tests. Here the editing, choosing images for the books, but also for exhibitions. We paint the frames also ourselves in the appropriate colors. Color testing. Here a big frame. <laughs> Sometimes we also paint the photo backgrounds ourselves, like here or here. This is another work we did. Here, <laughs> we needed to be safe. <laughs> Studio. And for the preparation, preparation of our exhibitions, we always build models in one to 10 scale and test different image arrangements. We always develop site specific presentations for every new exhibition. Some finally framed artwork, testings, color testings, framing. Yes. So this was about the working process. And now we would like to hand over again to Diana, who was meanwhile reading the questions from our visitors online. <laughs> Perfect. Do you want to do you want to come out of your presentation? Fine, I think. You leave it up there. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, thank you so much. Uh, it was such a fascinating deep dive into into your practice. Uh, really, it was it was great. Um, I just have a few follow up questions, and then um, let's have a look in if uh, there are some questions in the Q and A box. Um, so first of all, I'm really interested in your creative partnership. Um, in how the two of you work together to realize your joint vision. It's almost like the artwork itself was waiting for you, the two of you to meet in order to be um, realized. Uh, could you say more about how and when you knew that um, you had to work together, essentially? 
Yeah, it was funny. I mean, it wasn't like one moment in time when we decided let's work together. I mean, we were friends for a long time and it was more kind of a naturally growing um, uh, relationship from a friendship into a working partnership. And uh, yeah, it felt like just growing, I think. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. So no eureka moments, it was evolving organically. Yes, I and think yes. so. We can't Absolutely. say it was one moment in time. Okay. And um, how would you say your partnership has evolved over the years? Uh, do you naturally each take care of a different part of the process? Um, if it's not too much to ask, um, I'd love you to talk a little bit about a typical Lena and Zoe creative process. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, we know each other very well. And uh, since we almost, we see each other almost every day at the studio. So this was, the relationship was deepening. Um, but we focus on, um, on that, what we like to share and when we're, what is important that is that we are in constant exchange um, of ideas. It's a bit like a ping pong in between us. Yeah, it's like a dialogue, a constant dialogue. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and I mean, there is about the creative process. I mean, we we sh we share a lot. It's also not not like she does something or I do something else. It's more like we do everything almost together, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a uh, yeah, it's exchange very, and, yes. and teamwork. It's a really teamwork. We, we do perform our steps together. So yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The research tell to that. Mm. Yeah. Well, you so it's not that. like someone is pressing the button and the other one is doing uh, something else. It's, it's really, it's a, it's a close, mm -hmm. yeah, close intuitive yeah, collaboration. Yeah. yeah so interesting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, I'd love it if you could talk a little bit about your relationship with color. It's so prevalent and eloquent in your work. And um, uh, yeah, what does color mean uh, to you? Yes, mm. of course. <laughs> <very important. laughs> And um, yes, color is always a part of our artistic decisions also. And we, we think a lot. Of yeah, and what's, what's also funny is that the colors changed from the early phases. We were more like into these dark reds and browns and dark purple themes. Mm -hmm. And now we're more like in these vivid colors, like blue, yellow, red. So there were also like phases or, or periods of time when we had more, we were more into different colors. It's, it's, that's, that's quite interesting, I think, mm -hmm. to remark that we have phases where we, yeah, um, yeah with, with the colors, but always when we go and photograph, we are looking which, color would fit mm. the, the best to the object and that's Are also you... in intuitional part yes yeah. we're also aware of the symbolism of color and of the strong presence of color and oh, so it's really interesting that you're in this strong vibrant phase uh, <laughs> yeah there's something that we don't know, you don't know, but it's um, it's really interesting. It's also interesting that it seems very present. You're you're choosing the colors in the moment that kind of intuitively feel right for you. So it's um, yeah, you're not thinking it, of it in a kind of oh this in a series way or this work next to that one. It's really about that object and that color. Is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. I'll just have a look okay, thank you. in the Q&A box. Um, um, so there's a technical question. Um, he writes, I was wondering if you have always used 35 millimeter or settled on this 
format later? Did you try other formats and just preferred 35 millimeters? Yeah, that, that was funny. In the very, very beginning, we started with a middle format camera. And then we felt like we need to be a, more, a bit more flexible also with travel, uh, traveling that much and, and, and being a bit more, more playful with the camera. And these 36 images films we use are, um, it's, it's good to make this decision, not just to press the button for a hundred times, but you have these films that are limited and this helps us, mm -hmm. I think, to make the decisions when we want to press the button so we about the questions we we are only using 35 millimeters and always yeah. shooting with the mm. same camera now yeah uh, he also wrote incidentally i love the color frames oh thanks oh. <laughs> um another question that came in um is about your exhibition installations um and saying uh, the fact that you often introduce sculptural elements into the space, um, which feels immersive. Can you tell us more about how your ideas for this develop? Um, so. Oh, yeah, I mean, photography is the two dimensional room. And when we make exhibitions, of course, we go into the three dimensional room. And sometimes we're just interested how an object looks in the three-dimensional mm -hmm. so so we it's part of our exhibitions that we also are playing with <clears throat> sculptures and films as we said or... yes and they are often part of a site-specific installation so mm -hmm. it definitely creates very immersive experiences and i know you've spoken to me before about this kind of shift in perception that you love to play with, with through the colors but would you say maybe the sculptural elements play into that as well i don't know mm, they're more reduced with the colors they're often black and white or only monochrome in one color so i think we play more with color in photography, I'd mm. say definitely. And this is also our main focus. Photography is our mm -hmm. our base and our big love, kind of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll just take one more question from the QA box. It's a nice one to end with. Uh, she asks, uh, what uh, new projects are you currently working on? Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, besides Paris, um, as we mentioned, the next step is going to be that we are going to move our studio. So there's a lot of packaging we have to do. We're very, but and it's a bit sad to leave that space. Mm. The building is going to be teared down, but we were very lucky and found a huge space, a new space in Zurich, very centrally located, which is really very rare to find uh, we were looking for it for one and a half or maybe two years because uh, we knew that we had to leave here so um, and this big space is also we sh we share some of the space with some other mm -hmm. uh, people working in the artistic uh, area as artists and um, yeah in the cultural media. So we are very much looking forward to this um, moving. <laughs> and about the exhibitions, the next exhibition we are planning for now, I mean, we're doing some research and also yeah. doing yeah. some new we're working artworks, on new projects. Mm -hmm. which we would like to show in January at the Robert Borat Gallery in Berlin in our first solo show at his gallery mm. in Berlin. We're very, very exciting. Yeah. It. Mm. When uh, is the opening? So we can all pick is up going to be on the 12th, 12th of January. January. Yeah. 12th of January. Okay. And uh, yeah, and of course we're gonna be in Photo London and we will be very happy to see you all in Photo yeah, London. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I think that's a perfect place to end. Thank you both so much for your precious insights. It's really been great. And um, 
thank you everyone for joining this evening. And yeah, as Lena and Zoe said, hopefully uh, we'll all meet at Photo London in May. It'd be fantastic. Thank, thank you, you Diana. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thank, also, you. thank you to Photo London. And yes, thank you. And wishing you all a good evening from Zurich. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.